Hi, Chris. So nice. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. I was getting worried about you. I thought you'd, you know, got lost again or something. We just caught up in the California. Yeah, it's terrible coming up from the way now. Any time of the day or night. So you see how life could be there. Ew. Oh, <laughs> great looking guy. Hi. <laughs> 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 This stuff arrived yesterday, so I can move any of it if you want to. So this is where it's done, huh? Yeah, just a really sh uh, short tour. It was only two and a half, three weeks. Yeah. I only played eight dates, so, so yeah, it was the briefest of tours. How was it? Yeah, it was good. It was, it was good, good fun. Yeah? Yeah, I've never done that before. I've gone out on tour on my own, so... When did you start? How old were you when you got together with...? Um, when we first started, I was 18 in 1980. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we really seriously looked for a drummer. <laughs> I'm sure we could have found one if we really, you know, really wanted one. But you know, we liked the idea of... Um, when we started out more conventionally with two guitars and a bass, but we liked the idea of the drum machine even then. And after we got the first synthesizer, then um, we realised that that was more of a path to go down. It was kind of breaking uh, newer ground. I mean, when I think yeah. back and see and listen to your stuff, uh, it's really hard to imagine how you could do it, given what I know was the state of electronics then. <laughs> well, it's funnily enough, as technologies advance, you know, it's just limitless what you can do now. Mm -hmm. And so I think we, we tend to take more time doing things because we just don't know when to stop. Mm -hmm. Back then, because you did have some limitations, you know, like our first album, for instance, was recorded in three weeks, mm -hmm. you know, because we've been playing it live for quite a long time. Anyway, and uh, we knew what we all did. We just went in and recorded it, pretty much like uh, uh, you know rock bands were doing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we did a few overdubs, I suppose, but um, it was um, pretty much as it was played live. I've always seen songwriting as a really private thing, and you know, you, you know I'd like working on something until I know it's at least got a, a germ of something good about it before I carry on with it and you know maybe it's a maybe that's a bad way of looking at it but you know I can't imagine sort of sitting in a room with someone and like trying to come up with something you know yeah I usually either sit down at a uh, piano or start strumming some chords on a guitar and then just uh, I, I do it all sort of naturally I start just singing over the top of that mm -hmm. and uh, I find that a very natural way of writing songs because you kind of you um, your, what, the words that you're, you're, you're coming out with somehow fit the emotion of what you're playing. Yeah. And that always seems like a natural way to work to me, but it, a lot of people don't seem to work like that, and they find it a very strange way to work. But, yeah. you know, I kind of get a, you know, there's some kind of theme starts happening, and then I sort of go off down that path. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like to get the structure of the song together before I sort of move on to computers and uh, electronics and synthesizers. Mm -hmm. You were always the person that, in my mind, I was trying to make the film for. It wasn't that I wanted you to like it so much, but I wanted you to see it uh, in a way that film could work with what you did. And I thought that it might be instructive in some way. Because the thing that, for us, that was probably the most interesting, the most fun film we ever did together, Chris and I. And looking back on it, we know that. And I think that whole tour, really, and the film probably, really helped to um, you know, elevate the um, the, the um, perception of the band. We've always been on the brink, especially in America. You know, it was the first time really that we'd um, that we played any kind of stadiums. I mean, we no, actually, that's not true. We did play some stadiums supporting people in the in the mid '80s, but that was the first time we actually headlined those sort of places. Mm -hmm. So it really looked like things were were taking off for us as a band. Now, when did the tour start, actually? It was 88, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in 88. Yeah, those things, they just seem like another lifetime now. Sort of. Just, yes, even, yeah. even now, you know, just living here for three years, you know, looking back on living in England just seems like another lifetime already. Just, you know, it seems like I've been here for far longer. 
But I think Alan actually came up with the title 101, which was um, you know, a real relief because we were really struggling with names. Nobody could, uh, nobody could uh, agree on anything. I we can't were... even remember the, the names that we had. Most of them very lame. Yeah, they were, yeah. yeah. I'm not surprised we couldn't get any sort of agreement on them. They weren't very good. <laughs> But did you actually play in the 101 content? So that was just yeah. a sort of exaggeration? Yeah, that was the 101. That, that was, the, the, the Rose Bowl was not, well, I, I didn't do the math either, so... No, I don't think anybody really did it. Yeah, I think word for it. The, the first person who did the maths and uh, came up with 101, we, uh, we, we just believed him because it was such a good title. Right. 102 wouldn't have been quite so good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>